Hello friends, it's me, and today, Shein Style Theory. Let's check out Style Theory, how to finally stop Shein from the Style Tears. Together, let's go. There are two things you need to know about Shein. One, it's currently the world's largest fashion retailer, and two, it is shady AF. Stealing designs, low wages, bad working conditions, and suspicious PR campaigns. But how do you possibly fight against a hundred billion dollar business behemoth? I've got the answer. And ironically enough, Shein looks to be digging its own grave. <sighs> But do note that this video came out in the year 2023, right now it's in the year 2024, I'm so sorry for being late. Hello Internet, welcome to Style Theory. Hello Internet, welcome to Style Theory show that writes sins and tragedies about your favorite shady companies. If you're not familiar with Shein, they're a huge fast fashion brand and online retailer. Their claim to fame is to provide trendy products for ridiculously low prices, like way below what you'd find on other sites. Prices so low that they seem too good to be true. And guess what? They are! Scrolling through Shein's Wikipedia page is like reading a how-to guide on how to make a PR manager cry. Last time we talked about them, we covered their repeated history of stealing outfits from small designers, including my friend and fellow creator Cassie Ho. Shortly after that video, Sheehan responded and took down the item, leaving everyone to live happily ever after. Until, of course, they did it again with the exact same article of clothing. Look, I'm not here to give advice to shady companies looking to do shady things, but Sheehan, if you're gonna keep pulling the same shtick over and over again, at least don't be dumb enough to steal the same design from the exact same person. But that's merely the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the sins of Sheehan. Right now, Sheehan is facing a federal lawsuit that's bringing in laws usually reserved for the mafia. That's right, it's like Project Runway meets the Godfather up in here. But what do you do when you have a company that refuses to be better? Is there anything you can do? Yes, absolutely. In fact, I think I have the Sheehan solution. Like Icarus flying too close to the sun, I think Sheehan is currently sowing the seeds of their own demise. And we're the ones who can bring them down once and for all. I guess okay, the um, quick question. How? Like, how? Big question is, where should we start? Let's spin the wheel of wrongdoing for a quick catch-up. Ooh, Accusations of Sweatshops, great place to start. You see, when you buy a shirt online, the cost that you pay comes from a variety of expenses that go into making the shirt. Labor, materials, taxes, and of course, the markup. The amount added onto the final price to let the brand make a profit. What percentage of the cost comes from markup can vary heavily, depending on what type of brand you're talking about. Luxury labels like Prada, they have huge markups because of their social appeal. But for a company like Shein, who prides itself on extremely low prices, well, they're not getting a whole lot of value from high markups, which means that they have to to find ways of cutting costs. So, how do you do that? Well, step one is acquiring cheaper materials. They can also simplify the storage and distribution systems, but of course, there's also labor cost. In fact, labor is the single largest cost that goes into making our clothing, which means that companies like Shein are eager to find ways of pushing those labor numbers down. A recent documentary from BBC Channel 4 called Inside the Shein Machine was able to get a first-hand look inside some of Shein's factories, and uh, let's just say the situation was not great. 126-hour work week with non-existent days off. <laughs> Withheld income. <laughs> And just in general, low pay made worse through brutally high penalties for any mistakes made on the job. <laughs> Basically, you name a way workers can be nickel and dimed, and Sheehan's been accused of it, with worker testimony to back it up. So, how do you take the heat off accusations of bad business practices? Let's spin the wheel of wrongdoing again. Influencer trips. Oh, this one's exciting. Now, the weird world of influencer trips isn't exactly a new thing. Brands have been sending people to various places for promotion and collaboration for years. But boy, oh boy, did this one have a sinister twist. In an attempt to put a band-aid over all the heat they were taking over their factory conditions, Sheena invited a handful of influencers from IG and TikTok to come take a tour of their factory, as well as their innovation center, to meet some of their workers, to get a sense of how Sheehan actually made clothes. I'm hoping you don't need this one explained to you. It was all propaganda. They got the all-star treatment before being shown the best version of the company's best location. It's not like Sheehan was actively taking them to the factories and production partners that have been brought up by numerous documentaries, investigative reports, human rights organizations. Nope, they got the PR-friendly, sanitized version of the company, and this move backfired majorly. Not only did the influencers themselves get ratioed to high heaven for their content reading like a script from the desk of Sheehan CEO. I think my biggest takeaway from this trip is to be an independent thinker, get the facts and see it with your own two eyes. Is there narrative 
apply to us in the U.S., and I'm one that always likes to be open-minded and seek the truth. But the mainstream press were more than happy to add this to their ever-growing bonfire of weekly Sheehan Sins coverage. This one move took Sheehan's bad business situation and amplified the problems more. And then, of course, there was another round of blatant design theft. After Cassie Ho, aka Blogilates, became the latest in a long line of small online designers to have their work stolen by Sheehan, she raised an alarm against them, taking the battle to social media to vent her frustrations and call out Sheehan on their practices. And like any multi-billion dollar company would, Sheehan went into damage control. The item was removed and all was well until June when they stole the exact same design again. And here's the kicker, Sheehan is selling this version for less than Cassie pays for the materials and labor alone. Meaning that Cassie can't compete with the price of her own design on her own site. So how does this keep happening? Well, Sheehan's defense is they aren't like a typical fashion brand. They don't make every design they sell. Instead, they claim to function more like an Amazon for clothing. Other people are the ones creating the goods to be bought and sold, they're just the marketplace, the platform where that sort of buying and selling can happen. In a lot of ways, this defense is the same as the YouTube safe harbor defense that we've talked about on both game theory and film theory. We're just the platform. Anyone can use us and upload stuff to us. We can't be responsible for any copyright infringement that those people are doing. Sheehan is using the exact same idea, but here with designs. But even if they were the ones responsible for the stolen designs, the theft of product design is not technically illegal, something that we talked about extensively in our last video on this topic. How then do you stop a company that's repeatedly doing an obviously bad thing that isn't technically illegal? Well, for one- That makes a very good point. Like, the platform, <laughs> there needs to be some limitations, like absolute freedom breeds absolute chaos. There needs to be some limitation, there needs to be some policing or some warning systems like, hey, please don't do that. First warning, hey. Second warning, hey, third warning. Oh my gosh, you're getting in trouble. You attack them like the mafia. You see, three graphic designers filed a federal lawsuit in the Central District of California against Sheehan and its subsidiaries, seeking justice for multiple instances of both copyright and trademark infringement using the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, or RICO for short, an anti-corruption law passed by Congress and signed into law by President Nixon all the way back in 1970. And no, so it's like 50 years ago. Wow, it's outdated. Wow. The irony of an anti-corruption law passed by Richard Nixon is not lost on me. Racketeering is one of those crimes that you mostly hear about in mafia movies and mob shows, not during fashion week. But basically its goal is to punish legal schemes that make money from not so legal means. That's kind of confusing so let me explain by an example. Let's say that I hire Amy to go through the streets at night destroying people's fences. And then I come around the next day to offer my fence repairing business to the victims of this rampage. That would be considered a racket and I could be charged under the RICO Act. Even though me going door to door offering my business isn't illegal by itself, the scheme that Amy and I created is illegal and is therefore racketeering. In this lawsuit, the graphic designers are arguing that Sheehan's created this web of shell companies and subsidiaries to hide that they're actually the ones stealing all that intellectual property. They're also using it to hide taxable revenues from the government. If found guilty, it would be a solid first blow for all the designers that are looking to get control over their designs back. But obviously it wouldn't be enough. This company is massive. I mean, Sheehan has its sights set much higher than just being a semi scandalous fast fashion store online sorry, what people sorry sorry that was very familiar what is it honestly it wouldn't be enough this company that's singapore i know that that's singapore because there's a f f singapore flyer and the singapore oh, that's singapore that is the lotus singapore museum is massive. I mean, Shin has its sights set much higher than just being a semi-scandalous fast fashion store online. What people don't know is that Shin wants to be bought and sold on the New York Stock Exchange. That's right, this Chinese-based mega fashion brand would like to be your next stock pick here in the US. Why would Shin want to be made a public company in the US? Well, there's massive brand recognition, and obviously tons of cash to be made in launching your company on the New York Stock Exchange. US investors have seriously deep pockets, and the companies listed on the New York Stock Exchange are the most valuable companies in the world. In other words, Sheehan's current owners see the New York Stock Exchange and get big old dollar signs in their eyes. Since Sheehan is also from outside the US, a place on the US Stock Exchange would immediately make him one of the top fashion players on the planet. And of course, if you're a sane person, you see this news and you think, ugh, another shady company with a bad reputation gets a huge amount of money. What could be worse? And yes, you're not wrong. But what if I told you that I have a theory that going public would be the thing that solves the Sheehan problem? It would force Sheehan to become a better business. Hear me out. First, if you're unfamiliar with the concept of what it means 
things to go public, let me just give you the super duper short version. If I make a lemonade stand called Maddie Patty's Lemonade, that's my company. It's private. No one owns it but me. But if my lemonade stand gets super successful and I suddenly have myself like 5,000 lemonade stands across the US, I could consider going public. Which means that I literally open up my company to the public. To you guys, my grandparents, my neighbors, whoever, to buy parts of my company. I keep a good chunk of it for myself, but I sell the rest to the public. This is what's happening when a company goes onto the New York Stock Exchange. For Sheehan, the current owners would still have themselves a good chunk of the company, but other people would be able to buy pieces of that company known as stocks. So now there are like thousands of tiny owners and a handful of middle-sized owners and a few big ones instead of just the few large ones at the top. But how does that help Sheehan clean up their act? Well, if businesses are doing well, they make lots of money and the public is happy with them. The stock price goes up. Everyone wants to own a piece of that awesome company. But what happens if the business makes bad decisions? What if there are lots of terrible news stories circulating about them? What if they get a lot of bad press from the entire fashion industry all over the internet? Well, the stock price there isn't going to be looking so good. The owners are going to lose lots of money, the business tanks, and it all happens out in the open. With the big owners at the top feeling it where it hurts the worst in their wallet. Don't think it works? Take a look at Peloton, the golden child company of the pandemic who sells stationary bikes for three times the price of any other company. In a holiday ad from 2022, Peloton released one infamous commercial where a guy gets his wife a Peloton for Christmas and it ends up being life-changing for her. The ad was called Sexist, Gender Stereotyped, like a Black Mirror episode. The Peloton- Yep, and fun fact, the actress that played in that episode, I'm sorry, in that, uh, advertisement, in that commercial, <laughs> 48 hours later appeared in Ryan Reynolds, uh, gin alcohol commercial, so... Yep. Peloton stock, which was valued at over $8 billion, dropped $1.5 billion in a matter of days after the commercial. They were forced to make a public statement and apologize. Or how about Facebook? In 2018, it came out that Facebook had allowed outside companies, including political organizations, to access over 50 million users' information without their permission for years. This led to a massive backlash and a loss of trust in the company by the users that has not recovered to this very day. But most importantly of all, that loss of trust was also with the shareholders. Their their stock fell over 24%. They lost over $134 billion, and it's triggered Facebook to massively overhaul their policies in an attempt to win everyone back to their side. Want something in the fashion world? Or maybe something about sharing profits with creators? Well, for both of those, try Nike. Many college basketball- To be honest with you, um, the Facebook thing, I don't know that if it worked. Because from what I know, in the year 2024, right now, um, the only people that I know that uses Facebook are the elder generations, the old people, like my parents, my uncles, the, the grandfather generations, they use Facebook. My generations, we use Instagram, YouTube, uh, I use Twitch. The generation before me, younger than me, they use TikTok players are required to wear Nike shoes as a part of their uniform because their schools have major advertising deals with those brands. Huh, no hashtag ad to be seen anywhere though. Strange how that's just overlooked by massive governing organizations. Anyway, even though these players, these influencers, are forced to wear the shoes, none of them are getting any sort of advertising money from that sponsorship either. Freshman player Zion Williamson injured himself during a game when his Nike shoes fell apart literally in the middle of the game. And when people realized for the first time that no players were being compensated for being living mannequins for advertisements during the games, Nike's stock tanked. The point here is that when your company's whole value is based on public opinion, the public's opinion matters more. Shein has done itself no favors, and the only influencers who have shown up for them have been backlashed to the far corners of the internet. Shein is the pariah of every online community on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, and they know it. There have been reports swirling all summer that Shein is close to going public, but they faced a ton of hurdles to get there going all the way back to 2020. As a Chinese company, it's very difficult for them to enter the New York Stock Exchange, which is why they first had to move their global headquarters to Singapore. Yeah. Hello from Singapore. I am, I am from Singapore. Okay. Yeah, they want this thing that badly. But it seems like they keep pushing back going public every couple months because, you guessed it, they keep getting in trouble with the internet. With this latest scandal around the influencers touring a Shein factory, Bloomberg reported that the scandal set back Shein's IPO plans yet again because Shein knows they can't go public when everyone's upset at them. If they do, then their stock price immediately plummets and the owners immediately lose billions of dollars. They know that when you're a public company, you can't keep making the public mad. So there's a chance that maybe, just maybe, 
Sheehan is in for a real reckoning to the tune of tens of billions of dollars when they do manage to go public without changing their ways. And if they do, well that is the best time for Team Internet to hold Sheehan and other companies accountable for unethical business practices. Is it a perfect solution? No, of course not. It doesn't stop these practices from happening right this second, but it does shift the power into the hands of people who are willing to stand up to unethical practices and encourage others to be aware of it and buy smarter elsewhere. But hey, that's just a theory. A style theory. Keep looking sharp. And if you missed out on our first episode about Sheehan, click the box on the right to watch that. And hey, if you're curious about what the secret is in Victoria's Secret, check out our shorts. Click the box on the left. Thank you all for subscribing. Your subscription helps us to continue airing the bad business practices of these companies. And as always, my friends, I'll see you next week. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you find this video quite informative and educational. And my pets covered a lot of stuff in this video. I don't know why I don't know. But I hope that you enjoyed it. It was quite entertaining at some points. It was quite enjoyable at some points of the video, so yeah. But hey, that's just a theory. A style theory. Keep looking sharp. And I hope to see you all in my next video. Thank you so much. Subscribe. Thank you.